everyone, this is CLS on one. And today I'm gonna to be installing some roof rack crossbars made by Oxmart. And these are for a 2011 through 2015 Ford Explorer. So let's get started. So if you're looking to get a set of crossbars, you can find these on amazon.com and I'll make sure to post a link down below. And these are selling for right around 80 bucks. So here's a look at my Explorer. I have a 2014 Ford Explorer limited edition and I already have the roof racks, but I don't have the crossbars. So that's what I'm gonna be installing today is those crossbars to go in between the roof racks. So here's a look at what comes inside the box. This is one of the crossbars right here. It's made of aluminum, so it's pretty lightweight and it's kind of shaped aerodynamically. It's got a tapered edge here in the front and that faces towards the front of the vehicle. And here's a look at the second crossbar and they're both exactly the same. And it also includes all the necessary hardware so we can attach that to our existing roof rack. So we want to start with attaching the end brackets to the crossbars and these can only go on one direction because the holes only line up one way. So there's two holes on this cross bracket and that lines up with the two holes that's on the crossbar. On the other side of the crossbar, it only has one hole so you'll be able to tell the difference. To secure the bracket to the crossbar, it does come supplied with six silver screws, and these are about three quarters of an inch long. And you wanna be careful when you install these screws, you don't wanna over tighten them. These just secure into plastic, so if you over tighten it, you're gonna strip that hole. So if you're using a drill, you wanna be really careful. And if you're not real handy with the drill, I suggest just using a Phillips screwdriver so you don't have to worry about stripping those holes. And another thing I'd like to mention is that screw might not sit all the way flush when you go to tighten it down. You might have just a small gap. So you just wanna really pay attention as you're tightening that screw. And on the opposite side of the crossbar, it only has one hole. It's got one slot hole that's here on the crossbar and just one hole that's on the bracket. And that slot hole is meant for the bracket to be able to adjust back and forth so we can adjust that width of the crossbar to match our roof rack. So what you wanna do when you install a screw in this hole is you wanna go ahead and snug it up and then turn it back quarter of a turn loose. That way that bracket can slide back and forth. And again, you wanna be careful as you tighten down these screws, you don't wanna strip that hole. So I tightened it all the way, then I just barely loosened it. That way that bracket slides in and out easily. So that bracket should slide in and out just like this without much effort. So here's a look at the sliding brackets that attach to that roof rack. And these allow those crossbars to be able to slide back and forth. And to secure our crossbars to this bracket, we have to use this metal retainer and insert it inside these brackets. And the way this retainer works is it has some threads that are in the middle of it. And we'll use a plastic bolt later on to secure those crossbars to this bracket. And that metal retainer will go in these brackets just like this with those rounded edges facing down. Now it's time to remove the plastic cover that's on the back of the roof racks that's on the vehicle. And that's this piece right here. So to take this piece off, you just kind of pinch it and pull up and out at the same time. And it's not very hard to remove this cover, but I did have to use two hands, but it's just clipped in place. So to put it back on is real easy. In fact, I thought it was gonna be a lot harder to pull these off, but they came off real easy. And this is where we install those slide brackets with that knob facing forward towards the front of the vehicle. And something I'd like to mention to get this bracket to slide into the track easily, I did have to do just a slight amount of trimming with a utility knife right here. Just from this being molded at the factory, there was a couple plastic burrs that were inside this opening, and I just barely had to trim those with a utility knife, and then it slid in the track real easy. And here's a look at one that's trimmed and one that's not, so you can see the difference. Now it's time to slide the bracket into the track, but as you're sliding it in the track, you might have to hold that metal retainer in place. That metal retainer might want to shift on you as you're pushing that bracket in place. So all I did is I used my utility knife, and I just kind of held it back as I slid that bracket into place, and it worked out really well. Once that bracket is inside the track, you should be able to slide it back and forth fairly easy now. And now you want to do the same thing with the second bracket, and then repeat the process for the other side of the roof rack. And once you get all your brackets inside that track, you can go ahead and put that roof rack cover back in place. And again, that should go back on fairly easy. You shouldn't have to force it. It should just clip right into place. Now it's time to attach our crossbars and we're gonna attach that slotted end towards the front of the vehicle. And that's gonna line up with a knob on those brackets we just put inside the track. So I'm gonna hook the passenger side of the crossbar first because on the driver's side, it's adjustable. Now on the driver's side of the crossbar, I'm gonna move that either in or out to where that slot lines up with a knob here on the driver's side. Once I have that crossbar aligned, I'm gonna go ahead and push that slotted end into the knob. And once both sides are attached to the knob, I'm gonna go ahead and tilt that bar back. And when we tilt that bar back, it's gonna be lined up with some holes 
in those metal retainers. Now we're gonna use our plastic bolts that came supplied with the kit, and these are gonna go inside that hole that we just lined up. And with these bolts, you just wanna hand tighten them and get them nice and snug. But you don't wanna tighten that bolt all the way until you get that crossbar in the location you want it to be. And to move that bar, you just have to apply even firm pressure on both sides of the crossbar and slide that where you want it to be. Once you determine the location where you want your crossbar to be, go ahead and tighten those bolts all the way. And there will be a bolt on each side of the crossbar to secure. Now it's time to install the next crossbar, and all you gotta do is just repeat that same process you did with the first crossbar. And here's the end result. I got some nice looking crossbars that look like they belong on the vehicle. They don't look out of place. They have kind of a stock look to them. And that's what I was looking for. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. If you liked that video, please click that like button. If you wanna hear more from me, please subscribe.